5.8 is on radical equations and inequalities. All right, so a radical equation, this is going to be an equation that has a radical sign with an x under it. Okay, so the steps to solving a radical equation is very similar to an absolute value equation. Okay, you're going to isolate the radical, just like we isolated the square root, or isolated the um, absolute value. So we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. So I get the square root of x plus 1 equals 11. And to get rid of a square root, I'm going to square both sides. So I'm going to raise both sides to the 2. That's what step number 2 says. It says raise both sides of the equation to the power equal to the index. The index is the type of root, like a cube root, square root, whatever. It's like the little tiny number. So when we do that, we get x plus 1 equals 121. <laughs> Subtract 1, and I get x equals 120. Okay, you can go back and check, and x equals 120 works. Yes? How did you get 20 out of 20? Oh, subtract one. Okay, gotcha. All right. Divide by 7. Divide by 7 on the next one. So we're isolating the root. So I get the cube root of 5x minus 7 equals 12. I'm going to cube both sides to get rid of the cube root. So I get 5x minus 7 equals, if you cube 12, you get 17, 28. Add 7. So I get 5x equals 17.35 and divide by 5, I think it's 3.47, will you guys check that? So x equals 3.47. All right, so number 3 is similar, so you guys can try it if you want. You're going to divide by 6, so you get 7, you square both sides. So you get y plus 10 equals 49. Subtract the 10, so you get y equals 39. Okay, and the next one's a little bit harder, but still kind of same concept. Yeah, Faisal? Uh, I divided it out. All right, add the 10. So I get 13 times the square root of 2z squared minus 1 equals 26. Divide by 13. So I get 2z squared minus 1 equals 2, right, when I divide that out. Okay, now I'm going to square both sides. So I get 2z squared minus 1 equals 4. Add the 1 over. So 2z squared equals 5. Divide by 2. z squared equals 5 over 2. And then I take the square root. Now remember, whenever you take a square root, you have to write plus or minus. There's two answers. So your answer is plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. Now I will accept that answer on your test, but if you guys do Math Excel or if you do like a standardized test like the SAT or whatever, you're going to actually have to write it in a different form. Um, you could do decimal, but if you have the square root of 5 over square root of 2, that's what that's saying, right? Square root of 5 over 2. You take the square root in both pieces. You have a square root on the bottom, and you can't have a square root in the bottom. So we're going to multiply by root 2 over root 2. So your answer is actually square root of 10 over 2, and you have your plus or minus. So that would be the more accepted form of the answer. Okay, don't forget your plus or minus. Everybody always does that on the test. Don't do that. All right, so those are like the basic ones. You guys did similar ones in Algebra 1 towards the end of the year. Okay. So we're going to get a little bit harder in Algebra 2. So we're going to have extraneous solutions. So an extraneous solution is an extra solution that doesn't work when you go back and you check it. Um, the extraneous solutions are going to happen when we have an x um, that's not under the root, like it's on the other side of the equation or whatever, and it's also going to happen when we have like two square roots. So we'll see both examples. All right, so the first one I have 3 equals x plus the square root of 2x minus 3. So I'm going to subtract the x over. Because I always need to isolate my square root first. Okay, so now I'm ready to square both sides. So on the right side, I lose the square root, right? Square root and square cancel, so I get 2x minus 3. On the left side, you know that you can not bring the square in. You have to FOIL, right? You have to mul multiply it by itself. I do 3 minus x times 3 minus x. That's what I told you guys. Um, a teacher that just retired from Sycamore for years and years and years, she charged her students a dollar every time they did that. 
So that sounds illegal, doesn't it? Like, how could she charge a dollar? But she would give the dollars back at the end of the year. So, yeah. So I always say, I want to charge you a dollar. Huh? I don't know. I don't know what happens when you didn't pay. But yeah, so I should start doing that because I would be a millionaire. For as many times as you guys bring it in and say it's 9 minus x squared, it kills me. Don't do that. Don't do 9 minus x squared. All right, so foil it out so we get 9. My outer is negative 3x. My inner is negative 3x. The last is plus x squared. That's going to equal 2x minus 3. So if I clean up the left-hand side, I get x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 2x minus 3. And I have an equation that has x squared and x's. So I need to get everything on one side. Um, so I'm going to subtract the x squared over. So I have, x, or sorry, subtract the 2x over. So I get x squared minus 8x. All right, subtract that over. And then I'm going to add the 3 over. So I get plus 12 equals 0. Mm -hmm, exactly. So we're going to factor it. So I'm going to need x minus 6 and x minus 2. So whenever you have an equation that has x squared and x, you're going to have to factor. And then I set each one equal to 0. So I get x equals 6 and x equals 2. Most people can do this step like without writing the x minus 6 and the x minus 2 equals 0. Like you can do that in your head. You guys all do that in your head. It's not bad. Yeah. You got it? <laughs> I did it yeah. the way, but I just got x equals 4. I kept mm. the x, and then I just did a square to it. You can't do that. Yeah. I can't do that. Um, you kept the x, and then you squared what? No, I squared. Oh, like like here? Yeah. At the beginning? I, OK. So yeah, you're saying that he squared it here, and he squared it here. Oh, yeah, I didn't square that. Oh, then that's really illegal. OK, the problem with um, squaring right here from the beginning without it isolated is what that means is x plus the square root of 2x minus 3 squared, right? You can't just bring the square in. You'd have to actually FOIL it. And if you did that, then your, your first terms make x squared, and your last terms are 2x minus 3, but you still have your outer and inner terms. Okay, so your outer and inner would then be uh, plus x times the square root of 2x minus 3, and then you have another one, plus x times the square root of 2x minus 3. You still have a square root. So do you see why you have to isolate now? Because otherwise it's like a never-ending, like I'm always going to have a square root, always going to have a square root. Yeah. That's, that's, it seems like you could do that if it was like x minus yeah. the square root. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that, that's not doing the square thing, right? They would have to be identical if you were squaring them. But yeah, if they were like the difference of two squares, if it was plus or minus, then yeah, you could. OK, so can't do that. All right, now I just told you what an extraneous solution is. This one has an extraneous solution. So one of these isn't going to work. So we have to check. So we're going to do the check step. I know it's annoying. So if I check x equals 6, I check it in the original. So I have 3 equals 6 plus the square root of 2 times 6 minus 3. At this point right here, I know that this one doesn't work. OK, logic through this. Why doesn't this work? Because we have 6 plus and I have a square root. There's no minus in front of that square root. It's plus. It's going to be added. So 6 plus some number is not going to give me, like, plus a positive number is not going to give me 3. You guys see that? You can, like, solve it out. 6 plus 12 minus 3 is 9. So you get 3 equals 6 plus 3. It doesn't work. So it's out. So a lot of times as I'm solving this, I put, like, a little question mark over my axis. Like, are they equal? Let's see. All right, so 6 doesn't work. We cross it out. And then 2. So when I try 2, I'm going to have 3. I'm seeing if it's equal to 2 plus the square root of 2 times 2 minus 3. So I get 3. I'm seeing if it's equal to 2 plus the square root of 1. So 3 does equal 3. It works. That one's an answer. So x equals 2 works. All right, next step. So I have the square root of x minus 12 equals 2 minus the square root of x. Okay, this is one that has two square roots. We can't, like, isolate both of them at the same time. You can only isolate one at a time. So in this case, this one's already isolated. So we're good. That one's isolated. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to square both sides. So when I do that, the left-hand side just becomes x minus 12. 
But the right-hand side was 2 minus the square root of x quantity squared, right? It's a binomial, two terms that are being squared. So I have to write it like this. I can't just bring a square in. That's the biggest mistake people make. So I will say this a million times, and then on your homework, people are going to still make the mistake. Don't do this. Don't just bring the square in. So we FOIL. So 2 times 2 is 4. Your outer is negative 2 root x. The inner is negative 2 root x. And the last is plus x. <laughs> All right, so we can combine a couple like terms. We have negative 2 root x minus 2 root x. So that's going to be minus 4 root x. And then you can try to subtract x from both sides. And that's kind of nice because they go away. So then I'm going to subtract 4. So I have negative 16 equals negative 4 root x. So the square root still isn't all the way isolated. So I'm going to divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4. So I get 4 equals root x. I'm tricky on the test. I'm a mean person. Terrible. And I always do things like square root of x equals 81, square root of x equals 9, square root of x equals 4. I do that all the time because people always say x equals 9, right? That doesn't work. Right? That's, not, that's not the answer. That doesn't work. Do you guys see what you need to do? Square both sides. So you get x equals 16. Don't just see like a perfect square and be like, oh, it's a square root. That's not how it works, right? You have to square both sides. Do you see what I'm saying? So like this one would be x equals 81. This one would be x equals 16. All right, so you have to be very careful. All right, so we got to try 16. So if I check 16, I check it in my original. I have the square root of 16 minus 12. I'm seeing if it's equal to 2 minus the square root of 16. If you're good with your square roots, you know right away it doesn't work. Because this right-hand side is 2 minus 4. It's a negative number. This left-hand side is the square root of 4, which is 2. You can't have a positive 2 equaling a negative 2. It doesn't work. So it's out. So what do I write for my solution? No solution. Oh, math. Isn't that hard? All this work just to get no solution. Rough. All right. You guys want to try number 3? Try number three and four. Four is kind of easy. All right, so most of you guys were on your way to getting number three, um, except you were messing up in the last part, the factoring part. Um, so you're squaring both sides. So all of you guys had y minus one equals, and you remembered that you had to do y minus seven times y minus seven. I'm so proud. So you get y squared minus 14y plus 49. So I would say almost all of you guys have that. Okay, and then uh, you're going to subtract the y over, and you're going to add a 1 over. So you end up getting 0 equals y squared minus 15y plus 50. Okay. And about half of you were already to the point where you factored. So you had y minus 5 and y minus 10. And you had solved, so you had choices between 5 <laughs> and 10. But a couple of you guys forgot the check step. Okay, so you always have to check. It's very annoying, but yes, you have to check. Okay, so you're going to have 5. And when you plug in, you get the square root of 5 minus 1, and you're seeing if it's equal to 5 minus 7. I know it doesn't work, right? Because I have 5 minus 7. That's a negative number. That's not going to possibly be equal to the square root of 4. That's positive. There was no, like, plus or minus in front of here, right? It was already a plus. Okay, so 2 is not equal to negative 2, so 5 is out. But when you guys tried 10, it, it worked. 10 minus 1 is 3. You're seeing if it's equal to 10 minus 7. That's also 3. Sorry, not 10 minus 1 is 3. The square root of 10 minus 1 is 3, right? So you get 3 equals 3, so 10 works. Okay. And then a lot of you guys got to this point, and you squared. And you saw that number 4 was actually easier than number 3 because you square it, and you get z squared plus 7 equals, and you FOIL it out. You get z squared minus 2z plus 1. It's okay if you have to write it off to the side and do z minus 1 times z minus 1. I did that till my senior year of high school. Did I mess up? What did I do? Uh, no, I'm just wondering. Okay. So for the square root of 5 minus 1 equals 5 minus 7, 
Mm -mm, because since the square root is already in the problem, um, there's a sign that's already in front of it. So there's already a plus sign that's basically in front of it. Okay, that's called the principal root. And that's the thing that I said a lot of like math teachers across America mess up too. It's kind of scary when your math teacher's telling you wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when we subtract z squared from this one, so from number four, they go away. We like that. So now you have uh, 7 is equal to negative 2z plus 1. So I get 6 equals negative 2z. So I get z equals negative 3. But sadly, you go and you check. It doesn't work. It's a no solution. Because look, if at the beginning, if I plug in negative 3, on the right-hand side, I'm going to have negative 4. There's no way for that square root to equal a negative 4. It doesn't work. Okay, so next step. So we have a square root within a square root. So we're going to square both sides to get rid of the outer square root. So it becomes the square root of x plus 5 plus x equals 25. Alright, and then we're going to subtract the x over. So I have 25 minus x so that my square root of x plus 5 is isolated. Your question, Alex. Yeah. All right, square both sides. So I'm going to get x plus 5 equals, and I have to foil it out. So like I said, it's okay if you have to write it out. So you get x plus 5 equals 625 minus 25x minus another 25x, so minus 50x plus x squared. Shh, guys. So we get everything on one side. So I have x squared. I subtract my x. So I have minus 51x. Change it. Minus x, minus x. Right, I subtract 5, subtract 5. So I have plus 620. All right, now I'm ready to factor. Some of you guys are factoring pros. Kyle, what is it? Oh, man, I thought you were on it. All right, who else is a factoring pro in here? What do you got? <laughs> yeah, that's my answer, yeah. Anyone else? Emerson, what you got? <laughs> no? It's negative. 20. Oh, it's negative 31. I said that. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. I didn't hear you. I don't know why. <laughs> All right, so I get x equals 20 and x equals 31. All right, so if we plug in 20, we're going to have the square root of the square root of 20 plus 5 plus 20. We're seeing if that's equal to 5. So we get the square root of square root of 25 is 5 plus 20. Does it work? Yeah, that works. And then 31, a little bit harder. We get the square root of 31 plus 5 plus 31. We're seeing if it's equal to 5. That's a question mark. Well, that's the square root of 36, which is 6. So I get 6 plus 31 under the square root. Is that equal to 5? No, square root of 37 is not equal to 5. It does not work. So cross it out. Yes? It, both of them can. And actually on your homework, don't be so quick to say, oh, the first one works, I'm not going to try the second. Especially there's one in your homework that has a nasty fraction. So one of the answers is like 5, and the other one's like negative 10 over 7. I don't know. It's weird. And both of them work. <laughs> I know. So look for it. I don't remember. They were. I don't know what the fractions were. There was something weird. So you want to make sure that you uh, check both answers because you could get two of them working. <laughs> I don't remember what the exact number is. All right, but you can use your calculator to help you check. Okay. All right, next up. All right, let's skip number six. Let's go ahead and go to the um, ones that have rational exponents. All right, so it says if you have rational or fraction exponents, 
the same concept is used. You just raise both sides uh, to the reciprocal of the exponent. So on this first one, I have 5x plus 7 to the 1 third. What this really means is the cube root of 5x plus 7 equals 3. Do you guys remember that from yesterday? If you have a 1 third power, it means cube root. Cube root. So in order to get rid of the cube root, we raise both sides to the 3. So I'm not going to have you convert it into the root form every single time. I'm going to have you guys, from this step right here, you're going to recognize that I need to raise it to the 3. Now the reason that works, so let me write it a little bigger so you can see it. The reason that works is because what you do here with your powers is you multiply them. What do you get when you multiply 1 third times 3? You get 1, right? So you get 5x plus 7 all raised to the first power. So it goes away. Equals 3 cubed. One of the biggest errors on the test all the time. 3 cubed is not 9. As much as you guys want it to be 9, it is not. It is 27. So don't do that. Subtract 7. Subtract 7. So I get 5x equals 20. So x is 4. All right, the next one. So now I have a 1 half power. So what that really is is a square root. So we're going to square both sides. Square both sides. So I'm going to get 2x times 2x is 4x squared. And then the square and the square, or the 1 half power and the square cancel. So I get 4x plus 8. Exactly. It has x squareds and x's, so we need to get everything on one side. And we have a GCF. So we pull it to the front. And we factor. So we know we need x and x, we need a 2 and a 1, and the outer and inner need to combine to be negative x. Right? So we need a negative 2 and a positive 1. The 4 really does nothing. You don't have to multiply it in or anything. Basically, at this point, you say 4 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0. Like, any of those three things could equal 0. But 4 is not equaling 0. That doesn't work. It's not with making your whole thing equal to 0. So I can get x equals negative 1, and I can get x equals 2. Can you rule one out right away? Yes, 0. Wait, not me too. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Try again. Negative one. Oh, negative. Yes. You can rule negative one out because what your original problem is is really 2x equals the square root of 4x plus 8. So if you have a negative one, you have 2 times negative one, and you're seeing if it's equal to the square root of 4 times negative one plus 8, you're not going to get a negative out front. Like you're not going to have the square root equaling a negative. So that's out. But then 2, if you check it, it does work. I won't do that stuff. All right. So that was the rational exponents. We're also going to talk about inequalities. So what if I have like less than or equal to or greater than or equal to or whatever? Okay, so on this one it says a radical inequality is an inequality that can contains a variable within a radical. So when solving these, you just use algebra just like normal. So like this inequality, I would solve just like there is a equal sign there. So I'm going to have the square root of 2x minus 6 is less than or equal to 6. I'm going to square both sides, right? I'm going to get 2x minus 6 is less than or equal to 36. I'm going to add the 6 and get 42. So I get x is less than or equal to 21. So nothing was illegal there. I didn't, like, um, I didn't multiply by negative and have to flip the sign or anything. So everything's fine. OK. In the more complicated ones, like in pre-calc, you'll have a lot of harder ones. You would use something called critical values, which we'll talk about in the next chapter. So, all right. So anyway, um, so that's the first thing. So on our number line, we know that our x values definitely have to be less than or equal to 21. So we're like that. Okay, but that's not going to be my final solution. Okay, so let's think about numbers that are less than 21. If I pick 0, that's an easy number to check. If I plug in 0 to this original, so don't write this, but kind of follow along. I have 2 times 0 minus 6 plus 3 is less than or equal to 9. I'm trying to see if it's true or false. But if I have 2 times 0, that's 0. So I have the square root of negative 6 plus 3 is less than or equal to 9. That's bad. I have the square root of negative 6. I can't do that. So worst case scenario, what's the smallest value I can possibly have for x? Now I can have 21, but what's... I, could have, I can't have 1 because I'd have 2 times 1 minus 6. That's still negative. 
Nope, bigger than two. <laughs> you are correct, yeah, yeah. By process of elimination, we have said one, two, and you have landed on the correct answer, three. Why is it three? Because <laughs> two times three is six, right? Two times three, right? You have two times three minus six under a square root. Zero is as small as you can have under a square root. You can't have a negative number, negative number under the square root, but you can have a zero or a positive number. All right, so that's we're going to get that from the second inequality. So the second inequality, we say whatever was under our root, 2x minus 6, that has to be positive or 0. So it has to be greater than or equal to 0. So we have 2x is greater than or equal to 6, so x is greater, greater than or equal to 3. We need both things, these to be true. So it's like x has to be less than or equal to, 20, to 21, but it also has to be greater than or equal to 3. So we put 3 on our number line, and we do greater than or equal to it. So our interval notation, if you remember from chapter 1, is 3, comma, 21, both of them in brackets. Okay, so really quickly, you guys try number 2. It's the same thing, try number 2. All right. All right, so what did you guys get for this one? Uh, I got three less than five x greater than three. So you subtract the four, you square both sides, you get nine. So you have three x is less than fifteen. So x is less than five. Did you guys get that first one? The second one comes from under this square root. So we say three x minus six is greater than or equal to zero. Not just greater than, greater than or equal to. So if 3x is greater than or equal to 6, x is greater than or equal to 2. You need both things to be true. So we have an open circle on the 5, we have a closed one on the 2. So your answer should be bracket 2 to 5, parentheses. Now they can, could overlap like on the tail end. Like sometimes I make it so x is greater than 5 and x is greater than 7. Well, if they overlap like that, you have 5 and 7, greater than 5, but also greater than 7, where they overlap is here. It would be 7 to infinity. So look for things like that on your homework, because I think I have a couple like that. All right, you're free to go. 5.8.